everyone, this is Sarah from Future Dreams to Reality and today we're going to be having a garden update. Today is May 1st, 2016 and I'm not going to waste any more time, let's go ahead and get started. This is the little baby aloe vera that I pulled out of this pot right next to this one over here. It's just in what I use for my tomatoes, um, just as a kind of convenient little cup to start a separate plant in. Next up I have my lemon balm which I have cut back a little bit off the leaves so that on the stem so that I could have some little cuttings start. This is the tallest one. So I have three of these. There's this one, there's this one, and there's that one. So in here we have my mom's two yellow pear tomatoes that I started for her. Um, I have them in the same pot because they both sprouted in one little newspaper pot and I didn't want to damage them even though they were so young. Here I have some loofahs. These are little six packs that I've saved from buying plants. There was four in the last one, two in this one, and six in this one. And actually, if you look, has a second adult leaf popping up. So some of these are gonna be super, super excited to get into the ground. So I believe that my arch nemesis lettuce has been tamed. Hopefully these are some now edible leaves. I'm not going to harvest them for a couple days. I'm gonna let these guys go a little bit further because they have some younger ones surrounding them. Um, so I might clip back one or two leaves, but not enough to really do anything about. Um, over here in the same pot, there's some other ones that are kind of struggling to get there, but they're getting there, so that's all that matters, but I think I have finally, finally got this down. These are some mint cuttings I started a while back. These were just stuck in a pot, um, and they rooted. I had three of them. This one died. Um, over here, I have four little cups with some basil inside of them. These all came from the mother plant. These were rooted in water and transplanted in here and you can see there some of the roots are still here that were in the water but are no longer in the water. Those are just going to dry up and die basically. It does not hurt the plant as long as there is substantial roots in the soil itself. Uh, same for over here. I'm keeping these extremely wet because I transplanted them straight from water into soil and I didn't want them to go into awful, awful shock. So all of these are probably a little wetter than most people would put them, but I find that it helps me out a lot. So this is the not so gorgeous mother plant of all of my basil. Um, there are a ton of shoots in here. <laughs> um, this is where we got all of our baby basils and there's something going on with the leaves down here. I'm probably gonna have to snip those off. Um, probably nothing serious. It's just some browning on the leaves. It's just some browning on the leaves, but not that bad. This is another reason why I say that I have tamed my worst enemy, uh, which is lettuce. This is two muesli mixes that were really old. Um, this is the sweet and this is the spicy. It's kind of half and half. This one is laying over into the sweet side, but that's okay. It's all good. This is just more lettuce and I'm super excited. <laughs> This is the rosemary that I got the two cuttings I showed earlier off of. I transplanted it into this gallon pot. It was in a much smaller pot um, and I just thought it should have more room to grow. So it's doing very well. Next up we have the tomatoes in my front flower bed. This is a cherry. This is also a cherry. I believe this is a Roma cherry tomato, cherry tomato, Roma tomato, and two Roma tomatoes right next to each other. If you remember in previous updates, I had four yellow pear tomatoes in uh, little tomato cups that I use, and I just transplanted those four 
two, three, and four way over there, <laughs> which is the smallest of the bunch. I transplanted all of those yesterday into our front flat. Here we have our hanging pot of basil. I just have it sitting out in the flower bed because it's been raining for the past couple days and it just waters it really nicely with little to no effort on me. These are from the mother plant I showed a few minutes ago and there are six in here. Well, five of them are super tall and that one right there is, there's a fly on it, um, is probably two and a half to three inches tall. So there's six in here, four in cups some that died while in the water and also the mother plant still has more to give and I could probably cut all of these in half and make more basil plants. Long story short, we're gonna have a lot of pesto in our freezer. These are my strawberries in a hanging pot and if you look kind of in here some, you can see that I have flowers on it, which I was ecstatic to see because I want strawberries this year and I've never really been that successful with it so I'm I'm super pumped that I have so many blooms on here because this thing is is literally packed with them if I can kind of like there's another one hiding underneath a leaf and I'm sure there's some buried in here like here's some little buds I mean they're just they're everywhere and it's such a pretty sight, so hopefully I can make some strawberry tea this year. So over on the side of the house, I have two burgundy okras. This one has some actually pretty decent sized little tiny okras growing on it. It's not that tall of a plant. Um, I believe it was stunted by um, not being transplanted as quickly as I would have liked it and there's also some little holes in these leaves which I'm finding all over all of my plants so it's not just these guys it's literally everything this is the new leaf on this ochre plant since my camera wouldn't focus earlier so there's a nice close-up of it over here in this area I have some sunflowers which aren't really doing the best this is due to a lot of factors. This is arguably one of the healthiest ones and you can see its leaves are kind of dying off. It's got a nice stem on it so far. It's got a lot of new growth, but like this one next to it, that stem, that stem though. This one right here, if you look at it, you can tell this used to be a leaf. This one has been munched on quite awfully. So that's another reason. The final reason is that it floods back here when it used to not flood. So not only are they having bugs, they were transplanted, probably root bound and had root damage whenever I was pulling them apart, was not grown in the right season. So not only all of that, it floods. So yeah. This is not a plant, but it is a crucial part of the garden, at least the front part of it. 55 gallon trash can, which I am using to collect rainwater. Since I can't connect the big trash can to the gutter system, I have this little two gallon bucket, and whenever it rains, it comes out of this gutter here, goes into here. I empty this into that. In my potato bed, there seems to be some kind of yellowing in the leaves. I am seeing a couple little buds on some of the potatoes, so I'm assuming they're going to at least start producing very heavily. Hopefully, that's, that's what I want. Um, however, never grown potatoes in the ground before, so first experience, we'll see how it goes. Over here in this bed with the broccoli and the Brussels sprouts, I found some caterpillars, which as you can see, tore up my poor leaves. Um, that is not the only victim, there are several. So anyway, um, I took some soapy water mixture, sprayed it on the leaves on the top and the underside. The wind is blowing as you can tell. Um, <laughs> and uh, hopefully that helps. I believe the same caterpillars also annihilated this poor banana pepper. Um, it barely had a chance. 
my other banana peppers are flowering and putting on fruit, but they're not that big, so it kind of concerns me I might have to start some more. But as you can see, that's kind of a weird looking banana pepper, but it's all good, still edible. In the same bed, but on the other half of it, I have some corn plants. And in order to support them, because they keep falling over, never grown corn before either, all of this is mainly a first for me, um, I took some metal, I don't know if you would call this rebarb or not because of this and it's not kind of square, but I tied some string along there on several different height levels just to kind of give the corn something to latch onto. Also in between the corn up here, I have some zucchinis which I think I will start some more from seed because these guys are not looking the greatest. All of the stuff that I transplanted, for some reason it did really well at first, it did great, it blossomed, it did everything it needed to do, and then it just started decreasing in health. So trying to figure out what I'm doing wrong here, um, but it's, it's a learning experience. It's the first year I'm doing this, so. We'll see how it goes. Because of my corn falling over and doing what it's doing, this was transplanted corn by the way, I seeded some corn beside and in between just to kind of see what would happen, see if it would help any. Um, and I have several sprouts so I'm excited about those. My tomato bed is doing wonderfully. I have not seen any blight, knock on wood. Uh, anymore after I lopped off all of the leaves um, on the lower half of the stalk that were infected on most of them. Uh, they are coming back with a vengeance which is a good thing. Uh, so they are kind of leggy but that's okay. I'll add some supports in here if need be but all of this is looking gorgeous. So cherry tomatoes in the back homestead tomatoes in the front. This is a poor little avocado tree that has been in the window of our back bedroom all winter for like a year. Um, we started it last winter and it survived through this winter so I decided to put it in a pot but the bad thing about it, if you follow the stem, it's extremely long so I put it in some soil maybe the stem will thicken up. I don't know, we had to hold it in place. I figured if I put sticks in here, maybe it'll work. So you can see how long the stem is compared to where the leaves come out. This also has another story because my cat got a hold of it when it was young and chewed the stem to a stub. So we thought it was dead, but we left it in the window anyway just to see if nature could help it, and it did. So. That's partially why it's so leggy and kind of bent right around here. I have come to the conclusion that there is something digging up my green onions. Because every time I come out here, um, with the exception of right this second, there have been little tiny stems, say like this one for example. Just little tiny stems that have been knocked over or you know, they're trying to grow, but can't because things are digging them up. For example, hole. Hole right next to my poor sugar snap peas. Another hole. There's something out here trying to dig around, and I'm pretty sure it's a squirrel. But anyway, um, in the other part of the bed, I have some sugar snap peas that I started and transplanted. You can see the little newspaper pot. I just left them in there. Was not going to risk disturbing the roots. They are getting awesome. So eventually they will latch onto the uh, sticks that I have surrounded, surrounding them into a forest. <laughs> Uh, I will plant some more where those were supposed to be. I put some in the ground. They never came up. So I was just kind of at a loss and I was like, okay. So I started some newspaper pots. Once again, a big no-no, but oh well, it's working for me. 